um, you're in the car and following these storms right now. What, what from a media perspective and from a meteorologist perspective is um, the reason you're out there and, and, and why is that so important? One of those situations where now, you know, some people are definitely scared to go in the field because, you know, the advisement has been to stay at home in most states. For us, we're still essential. We still have to report. We still have to, you know, give the news, whether it be the news or weather news. And we're having to take really drastic steps to change things in the field ourselves. Um, normally, you know, when we go out, we do this. We're, you know, covering the storms, and then we may be covering damage. And then, in most cases, we're going to go and, you know, try to find a place to have a meal, uh, try to find a place to sleep for the night, get ready for the next day, or get ready to head home. For us, over the last month and a half, uh, my wife already has a a bit of an issue with lupus, so she has an underlying condition. So I'm having to be extremely careful. Um, we have tons of hand sanitizer, gloves, uh, N95 masks. We've been sleeping in tents on air mattresses at campgrounds that were open. Now we're going to likely have to do some primitive type camping when we go out for the next month month or two months or however long um we also are having to bring our own food because in many cases we just don't either a you don't have restaurants open to do curbside when we're finished with our day or b you know the comfort level of trying to get food right now is just not there because um personally i think you could easily spread a virus through you know food food contamination um so i mean we're just having to be extremely careful wiping down gas pumps before we use them, wiping down credit card readers, uh, because we've still got to pump fuel. It has really changed the way that we operate, and we're having to, to really slow down and be more attentive to the things that normally would be second nature to us when we're in the field. So personally, I'm a little more worried about other things than the storms, and you have to, you have to pay attention and uh, really think about things more in depth. And, and it also, you know, I, I second guess myself sometimes. I don't want to become complacent about the weather and then have an issue there as well. So it's it's becoming very challenging, but we still have to be out here, reduce number of spotters. Tim, Tim to kind of uh, speak to you, you've, you've already been out um, chasing as well. You've done your damage assessments. You've, you've, you've seen some of these um, effects probably as well. Is there anything like what Brett was talking about that, that you think you've uh, had to change or that's limited your ability to, to do your job or to uh, pursue the storms? Absolutely. Everything Brett was saying with regard to you know, carrying uh, hand sanitizer, I have an N95 mask and have gloves, I have surgical gloves, I have a whole box of them. So every time I go to fuel up, I put on a surgical glove and then go ahead and proceed to use that and then throw it away after I, after I fill up the vehicle. Uh, fast food is the order of the day, obviously, and uh, that's not good for my health. Uh, my doctor would certainly uh, frown on that, but that's the way chasing is. So uh, some of the uh, fast food restaurants are still open fairly late at night and, and uh, even the Sonics we found were open and, and not my first choice uh, to go eat there. But if it's the only thing around, you want something warm uh, there, uh, there you go. Hotels, I have not found to be a problem yet. Uh, I've been finding that many hotels welcome to have a visitor because uh, they don't have hardly anybody in the hotels. So uh, I'm not too, too concerned about that so far. Tim lives in Texas, uh, Brent's in Alabama. You're in Arizona, so you have to do a lot of traveling to get to where you need to be. Uh, what do you think the effects may be for you? Have you already experienced some of them? Kind of tell us, uh, walk us through your game plan. Uh, well, at least I haven't experienced them. I haven't been out chasing yet. I've kind of put a goal in my head of not chasing until May, just so I don't even think about it right now. I just want to wait till things maybe get a little better. But for me, at least coming up, it's, it's going to be different. I usually, you know, I usually will do tours for seven days, 10 days. I don't know if any of those are going to happen. They don't usually start till mid-May. So I don't, I, right now I'm, you know, one of the guys coming, he was a 77 year old man who's come on a couple of my workshops before. He's like, I don't want to come and I don't want to stay in hotels, and, and which is great. You know, I don't want him to risk anything he doesn't want to. But um, 
you know, for me, when I started doing this, I started in Arizona chasing by myself. And when I started coming out the plains, I had a buddy or two, but really my first time ever coming out was by myself. And I learned to chase solo and how to navigate, look at radar and do all the stuff at the same time. For me, I'm almost thinking, you know, it's going to be like kind of like a flashback to how I used to chase. And right now, you know, the plan is to bring a cooler of food and a sleeping bag and a pillow and sleep in the back of my core runner. And if I need a, you know, motel, you know, I might even go in and bring my pillow and my sleeping bag. So I don't really have to touch the bed and make sure I wipe everything down. And um, like Tim said, you know, I kind of, I have a neighbor who works with hotels and, you know, I know that some of them out there, you know, they're going to need money. They need support as well. Um, and so, you know, in a way, hopefully we're kind of helping them out at the same time of being, you know, safe 